Hello and welcome back to another one of these A-level physics mechanics videos. So today we're going to be looking at Newton's second law which just states F equals ma. So what this means is that the resultant force is proportional to the acceleration of the object. So what does this mean? Well what we can now do is let's say we have a again classic little box and we have 10 newtons going to the right and we have 5 newtons going to the left and the overall mass of this thing is 10 kilograms. Yeah, We can now plug this into F equals ma to work out how quickly this object's going to accelerate and also in what direction. So what we're going to do is take to the right as positive because if I look at this situation it's fairly obvious the box is going to move to the right. Then what we have is we have 10 newtons minus 5 newtons, so again we're just using F equals ma and the key thing to remember is that F is resultant force, okay? So you need to add up all of the forces acting on the object. Equals 10 times acceleration. And again, obviously our force is in newtons, acceleration is in meters per second squared, and mass is in kilograms. So then A is just equal to 5 over 10, which is a half or 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so again, fairly simple, but it is another thing that we're going to add on to the pile of mechanics tools that we need to be able to use in our exam. Again, this does actually come up in A-level maths and A-level physics both, so kind of a double whammy. So a few things to remember. One, you need to define an N, blah, 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 a direction which is positive, okay? So I chose to the right as positive. Again, if I look at it, I can kind of see what my value is going to be. However, if you chose to the left as positive, you would just get negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared, which is obviously going to be the exact same thing in your situation. You will get full marks. It's completely fine. It doesn't matter so long as you're consistent. And the next thing to remember is that F, the force, is a vector and the acceleration itself. So you can get a negative number. But without further ado, let's just get on to some practice questions and see how this gets up. Now, again, due to the nature of F equals MA, this will likely come up in future videos as well because it just comes up everywhere, okay? So, the world's tallest building is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, UAE. The viewing gallery for the public is on the 124th floor. The lift visitors use it, ugh. Visitors use takes 56 seconds to reach this floor. The motion can be divided into three parts. So this first bit's not 100% relevant, but you have an acceleration phase, then constant velocity, then deceleration. So, as the lift rises, so this is the important thing, as it rises, we're going to have essentially an acceleration, okay? Because obviously it's going up. So you can imagine that this is the floor of the object. Okay, obviously the person's on the floor, so actually let's slightly uh, raise that up a little bit. Okay, what kind of forces are going to be acting on them? Well, you're obviously going to have their weight acting downwards. So by the way, you can leave them in terms of letters. So you can put W instead of weight. They do know what that means. And if you are touching something, then there's always going to be a reaction force acting upwards. Okay. And again, you don't need to write the definition, but you can write it out as well. So as long as you use like reasonable letters, like don't call weight X or something and the reaction Y, right? Call them by their actual letters. So. Where did people go wrong on this question? Well, first of all, they said the upwards force was tension. Now, think about what they're saying. This is the problem with force diagrams is, and there's a lot of questions like this, especially if you have the A-level, so if you do Edexcel maths, if you have the Edexcel maths mechanics book, there's a question at the end where they basically stack up. So they're in an elevator, so there's an elevator, and then there's a box on top of a box on top of a box. And it basically says to work out the reaction force of the top box on the second one. And everyone gets that wrong because they're not thinking clearly about what this is. This is the forces acting on the passenger. Tension would be acting on the lift because it's the actual um, cable that's holding the um, lift up, which would have the tension, right? I mean, think about it. Are you being stretched when you go up in, in a lift? No, right? So there's no tension. That's not what's happening. It's not like the cable's around your neck and it's dragging you upwards, right? Instead, the floor of the elevator's pushing you up because you're being pushed down overall because you're accelerating and you have your weight acting down. That's it. There's no tension or anything else, okay? So you literally get two marks. 
but you lose a mark for every missing force and you also lose a mark for any force that shouldn't be there, like tension or air resistance or something else, which is exactly the mistake people make. Again, when you're drawing a force diagram, be really particular about what you're talking about. If it's of the passenger, you don't need to draw the whole lift because we're just looking at the passenger. What's acting on the passenger? Cool. This was a painful question for a lot of people and it's basically the same thing as this. So a physics student of mass 60 kilograms decides to measure the initial acceleration of the lift. She places a set of scales on the floor of the lift and steps onto them. While it's accelerating upwards, the scales read 70, increase to 73. So this should make sense. When you're standing in an elevator, any time an elevator has gone up, you feel like you're heavier, right? You get pushed down. Likewise, when it goes down, you feel a bit lighter, your stomach lurches up. There is a reason for this, it's because you're accelerating. If you're accelerating upwards, you get kind of pushed down. In air quotes, not actually being pushed down. So how would this look in terms of a diagram? Well, again, I'm not going to draw the whole lift because there's no need to. I'm going to draw the floor of the lift and I'm going to draw her as just a ball, okay? Just to make my life a bit easier. Now, here's where things can get a bit tricky. So depending on how good your teacher is, you would have explained why this increases, like what's the actual reasoning, right? Because think about it, if you have your scales and you step on them, it's reading your weight, your downwards force, okay? When you are accelerating upwards, however, this is actually weight plus an additional force, right? So you can call it, for example, F, right? Now, that's why it's reading a bigger value. That should make sense. Now, keep in mind that when you step on a set of scale, when you step on anything, the force acting downwards equals the force acting upwards. So you now have an upwards force of R, which is the same as W plus F. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So in my diagram, the upwards force from the scales or the elevator acting upwards is W plus F, so it's the resultant force, which is 73 kilograms as a force, which is 73 G. And my downwards force is the weight, which is 60 G. Okay? Now you might think, well, how the hell does that make any sense, right? There's a, diff there's a disparity here. That difference is the F, which if we're using F equals MA, should now make sense, right? It's going to be 13 G because that's where the additional force comes from. But obviously in my diagram, I don't want to write R is 73G, downwards is 60G, right? So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another arrow here and I'm going to call it F, which I don't know, right? And obviously it acts downwards. Hopefully that makes sense. So F is just going to be 73G minus 60G equals 60 kilograms times acceleration. So again, I'm actually going to get rid of this for now because we don't need it. But hopefully that makes sense. And again, depending on, this is just a fact that you know. You can work it out, but again, keep in mind, since this kind of standing in an elevator on a set of scales thing has happened somewhat frequently every couple of years, it's, um, it's good if your teacher, or now me, has gone through it with you, okay? So the scales actually read your weight plus your acceleration force, so whichever way, if you're going, um, blah, 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 if you're accelerating upwards or downwards. If you're accelerating downwards, this F is now negative, right? Which is why it gets smaller, and that's why the reading on the scales gets smaller. Your actual weight hasn't changed, it's just the reading on the scales. So, this gives me 13G equals 60A. So, A is equal to 13G over 60. Now, they have actually done you a bit of a favour. It tells you what the answer is. Again, this is actually to help you. Well, actually, in this case, it's not to help you with anything. Um, but you can just keep redoing the question until you get the right answer. Um, but let's have a look-see. So we have 13. Uh, so it's times 9.81, but sometimes exam boards will tell you just take it as 10, just take it as 9.8 or whatever. That's fine. In this question, we're just going to take 9.81. There won't be much of a difference anyway. We get 2.13, which is, of course, about 2. And again, the way I define that is if you round it to whatever, like, the nearest whole number is or the nearest one decimal place or whatever, 
and you get the same answer. So if this was 2.5, then round to one decimal place, and you get it, that is what they mean by about. Near the end of the ascent, the velocity of the lift decreases from 10 to rest in 5.3 seconds. So again, if you remember, acceleration is just the change in velocity over time. So it ends up at 0, starts off at 10 over 5.3. Zero point two oh dear. That's actually why you should always do the um fraction button. But since I'm doing it on the computer is a bit difficult. Minus one point eight nine meters per second squared. Not bad. Now it says calculate the deceleration, so you could obviously say that this is one point nine eight meters per second squared for deceleration. That's fine, right? But negative acceleration is what we mean by deceleration. Now, the next question is a bit more interesting. So with A-level physics, and this is across all exam boards, um, what they want to really focus on is not just the maths and the calculations, because you basically do that in A-level maths. They also want to focus on why things happen. So, for example, statements like this. So either why things happen or why things are equivalent or whatever. They want you to explain the physics. So with physics, it's just interpreting maths. But you need to interpret maths in, in context, and that's the key skill. So for those of you doing A-level physics, you're probably going to do something physics related at uni. This is probably the biggest skill you can have. Now it's five marks, so you can probably guess that I'm going to have five points. Now it says, just state Newton's first two laws of motion. So the first law is just an object in motion or in constant motion will continue with constant velocity unless acted on whoops, by an outside by actually no by a resultant force okay by the way there are so many different ways to word the first law of motion the reason why I've worded it this way is because it refers Newton's second law of motion which is and I'll go through this again this is F equals MA right so the way you would word that in words is that the um, acceleration on an object is proportional to the resultant force acting on said object. So the reason why I wrote the first law in this way is because if you look resultant force and then resultant force, so we can directly link them. But first law, some people say an object... Um, Normally, in moving in a motion, will continue with constant motion unless acted on, because keep in mind, the velocity bit, it doesn't mean that they have the same speed. So it doesn't mean speed up or slow down, right? If I'm travelling in one direction at 10 meters per second, and I turn, that is a non-constant velocity, that's an acceleration, and a force has to make me turn. So that's key here. So that's two marks, done. This is why I like bullet pointing answers. So again, I say this in every video, but just in case you've skipped to this one, bullet point your answers in A-level physics. You will never be deducted marks. Even the QWC, quality of written communication, all that means is that you write things that are logical, they're in a logical order, and you don't contradict yourself, right? Think about it. Quality of written communication means that what I'm writing, you can read and it's intelligent. It makes sense, right? Like you can actually understand it. Bullet points are the best way to do that, right? Like if I told you how to set up an experiment and I give you a list of bullet points, that makes more sense than me writing full-on essays with connectives, yeah? Like think about it, if I were to tell you how to do an experiment, I'd give you step one, this, step two, this, step three, this. That's what I'm doing here. State the first two laws, boom, boom, first second, two marks, done, I know what I'm doing. Now, why does the second law include the first law? Well, the second law says that you, in order to have an, so second law, to have an acceleration, you must have a resultant force. Right. So that's a key point there. The second law says that in order to have an acceleration, you must have a resultant force. This is the same as saying that an object will have constant velocity unless acted on by an resultant force. Okay? 
So, um, this is because acceleration change. And that's it, five marks. Easy. I can just carefully do it. So keep in mind with this, with A-level physics, you're going to have six, seven markers, which are all about describing stuff. You don't want to write a page. You want to write six bullet points, six marks, boom, done. But that brings us to the end of F equals MA. Again, it comes up again and again in the future topics, but this is kind of a good brief overview, good overview of it, and it will give you the skills required to go and do the rest of the questions. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one.